Welcome back to Money with Mission. I think you guys are going to really enjoy this show. I'm talking to Angel Williams. Angel and her husband, Jason, are managing partners for Lauren Capital LLC. They are multifamily investors in Wichita Falls, Texas. Angel and her husband have a special place in their heart for educators. They are working um, to get teachers involved in real estate investing for passive income to give them options in their life. They also were working very hard to be able to personally um, invest in a a cause that is very near and dear to their heart. You got to listen to the show to hear about this one. Um, Take a listen. Enjoy. Be the change you want to see. Make a difference by giving your money a purpose, a mission to do good. Welcome to Money with Mission, where we show you how to create passive income so that you have options for how to work and how to live your life while leaving a legacy of positive social impact. Welcome to the show, Angel. I'm excited to have you. I'm doing okay. How are you over in Wichita Falls? I'm doing great. I'm really excited to be here today. And that is Wichita Falls, Texas, Texas, you guys. (laughs) I blew it. I was about to say Kansas. (laughs) Yeah, I know we get that a lot. It's Wichita, Kansas, Wichita Falls, Texas. Texas, got it. And that's in North Texas near Dallas. Yeah, I usually, when people ask where we're from, I'll be like, North Texas, but not DFW. Gotcha. Because when you say North Texas, people immediately go, oh, North DFW. Dallas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Got it. So what are you guys doing over there? I know you're, you're. Um, I kind of did your introduction before, and you've got a couple of different platforms that you've got going on. The reason I wanted to have you on is because of your impact and the things that you guys are doing around that with your investing, which is always attracts me to people. And I know my audience, my ladies out there, my women physicians out there are ready to learn because they want to invest in things that give them a return and have a big impact out in the world. Talk about what Lauren Capital is doing. All right. Um, so we started out in residential um, and we still got some residential stuff. We don't, we're not going to shun people like you you come across some people like oh you still have single families why do you still have single families you're in multifamily now well mm-hmm. those single families are an amazing store of value and so we just set them there and then if we need something we cash out refi them and move, <laughs> make bigger moves yes um yes. so I'm never going to shun somebody for being in a different real like a different niche um if they want to be in something else I'm never going to do that um but that was where we got our start my husband and I both grew up in families and invested in residential real estate so we've been doing it forever and ever. Um, we bought our first house in 2003, and then we moved here in 2007. We have four houses here now, but in 2017, we got our first taste of like hearing about what multifamily was. And I was like, what? And see, so we had our son in 2010. Okay. And in 2012 was when we got his diagnosis that he had Duke 15 Q, which is a really rare genetic condition that carries with it some pretty hefty medical bills okay. um, for all the therapy that comes along with it. And we came to the realization that um, single family was just going to be too slow of a roll <laughs> and we were going to have to scale. And that was what when we you, heard about, huh? What were you doing before you started investing in real estate or did you just come out of the womb? And I know, I mean, I'm being sarcastic. Okay. Well, but honestly, so Jason and I, we got our house, our first house in 2003. Okay. I'm older than Jason. So I okay. was 26 and Jason was 24. Okay. So that was your first first investment property or that was your house you bought to live in? We lived in it while Jason was finishing up his doctorate. It it was when we, when we bought it, we knew it was our first investment property. Got it. And we never even talked about it. Like we just knew it was our first rental property. Got it. And you guys came from families who did real estate investing. Mm -hmm. Is that what you said? Okay. Okay. So you bought this property it went unspoken, but it became your first rental property. You lived in it for a little bit. Yeah. We lived okay. in it for like three years and then we started the make ready in 06. I guess we started getting it ready. And in 07, it became a full on rental because we were already in Wichita Falls. Got it. And then you just kept going with that. You started out buying single families. Then in 2017, that was when we got two- the multifamily bug. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and so we were like, we wanted to learn more about it. And so we found a mentor and at that point in time, I was like, oh, that's so expensive. We can't do that. So we found somebody else. So to anybody out there listening, go with your gut feeling and go with the first mentor you want, because you're ultimately going to wind up with them anyway. <laughs> and what I wound up doing was I cost us a year and a half and about $30,000. So that just, was your first, the, the, you didn't take your first one. You didn't take the one you wanted. Mm-hmm. You went to somebody less expensive. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and, and less expensive was like 6,000. So we went with that person. 
And we floundered in that program for a year and a half. Took us a lawyer to get out of it. Mm -hmm. And then we wound up contacting the first person we met. And the program was no longer 12,000. Now it was more than twice that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I wound up costing us not only time, but money. And so we still wound up going with the person that we wanted to go with from the beginning. Okay. So So, you, um, you, you gave a little pearl there, go with the purse, go with your gut and, and you know, yes, money seems like such a big thing, but time is a bigger thing. It is time is bigger. You don't get time back. You can get money back. Um, and I would just say that if you find a mentor or a coach that you really want to go with, just talk to them, explain to them your situation because those coaches, a lot of times they're, they're looking for specific people to coach too. And someone that has just the, the honesty and the Mm -hmm. integrity to go to someone and say, Hey, I really want to be a part of your program, but I can't do this in one fell swoop. I'm going to need a payment plan. I've got to do something. Can you please help me? Um, I think a lot of times they will. Yeah. I'm not saying they all will. We actually just figured out how to save it up and then pay it. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Yeah. But I would just, yeah, go with, go with who you want to go with to begin with. Cause in the end you cost, you cost yourself time and the time you can't get back. Let me ask you this. What, since we're on this topic and we're going to go more into what you guys are doing with Lauren, but when it comes to a mentor and a coach, I know you got it to help you guys begin doing the multifamily syndications. What do you think about mentors and coaches for people who want to be passive investors only? I don't know that it's a bad idea. Mm-hmm. Um, because like, for us, so we got our coach in, I think it was 2018. We didn't take our first deal active until 2021. Okay. <laughs> so he was, we were meeting with him. We were learning about his stuff. We were reading his book, going through his, his programming um, for three years before we ever did anything. So it's not a bad thing. You get to learn the ins and outs. And we were passively investing then too. So okay. we started passively investing in multifamily in 2018. And so having a coach helped us a little bit as far as, well, helped us a lot, actually, as far as like what we were looking at. And when we got like the PPM, mm-hmm. we started getting all this paperwork in, like, right. What are we looking at? Right. Um, and what does this mean? What do these numbers mean? And my husband understands the numbers, but I look at the numbers and they're just arbitrary. Yeah. My, my newest fun saying is like, Hey, eight. <laughs> Because it means nothing. It's just well, number eight. <laughs> yes, I, <laughs> yeah. So a lot of times the numbers are just <laughs> arbitrary to me. They have very little meaning unless I can really understand theoretically why something's going the way it's going. Gotcha. They're just numbers. So, so I, I, I really that appreciate that because I do think that people who are new to it, even the, as an investor on a passive side, a PPM is a private placement memorandum. It is a thick paper that's all the legal and scary stuff about the deal. And you start reading that and it'll turn you around quickly from, I'm not doing this thing. Whereas if you had somebody to coach you through that and help you understand why it's that way and all those kinds of things, I think more people would get into real estate investing, even on the passive side. So I think it's, I do agree that um, getting that, getting somebody to help you through your first through few of those is really important. And then yeah, well, help you it, understand all those numbers. Yeah. And it, it helps you too, because it's like, that stuff is there not to scare you away, but just in case the SEC gets involved. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. It's not there because it's, it, it's not there to try and come against the investor. It's there if to protect at, people if the SEC comes at it. Exactly. And it's kind of like all those, all those um, warnings that come with every drug that you prescribe to somebody yeah. as a physician, every one of them has a whole long list, but we still prescribe because and I'm pretty sure everything out there the eventually causes cancer. Every, every yes. They're all carcinogens at some point. <laughs> Risk and benefits. That's how we're looking at real estate investing, just like in medicine. Okay. So you guys at Lauren Capital, you got to multifamily investing after you had your son in 2010, 2017, 18, you got your mentor, 2021, you bought your first property. Yes. So in 2000 and in August of 2021, we got our first deal under contract and we got it closed and across the finish line on December 17th of 2021. Okay. Wow. And that was your, was that a syndication? Yes. It was our first syndication, first multifamily. It's a 72 unit complex and it's about 15 minutes from my house. Okay. 
Now, one thing we talked about, or one thing that's in your on your website is talking about how you guys may hold properties longer than a traditional um, syndicator. And why do you guys do that? So we come from the buy and hold world, or from the buy and hold world. We come from residential. You don't buy residential unless you're a flipper, but you generally don't buy it and sell it and buy it and sell it and buy it and sell it. You buy it and rent it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we're real. That's the model we're used to. Okay. And so we have, I think just from coming from that, we're going to have a tendency to hold things a little bit longer. Um, and you know, the ultimate goal is to get as close as we can to infinite returns. Right. If we don't, if we don't actually attain infinite returns. Okay. What is an infinite return for those people who don't know? Yeah. So infinite returns is something that we experience in single families a lot of times because you just cash out refi and you get your 20% back. And so none of your money is tied up in the home anymore but you're still renting it and making money. So that's infinite returns. Yep. Well, you can do the same thing in multifamily. It's just bigger. <laughs> I got you. So you may, you may have the property for five years, bring it up to increase the value, bring the rents up, refi it out, pay all the investors their initial capital back, but keep them in the deal. You're not selling the deal. You're keeping the property. And now, okay, you guys, I think if you, it's, if you think about it as, um, gambling in Las Vegas. Okay. You take 200 bucks, you start playing blackjack, you make your 200, you make 400 bucks. You take your 200 off the table, right? Now you got 200 to keep playing. You got nothing to lose, right? It's, you got your money back in your pocket. That's an infinite return. Does that make sense? I hope so. It's making money with that, with your money off the table. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. And okay. I infinite never... returns is what everybody's going for in real estate. That is what you want. I love and your I've never model. heard about it in multifamily until I heard Sam Newell talk about it. I love you. I love the model. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, okay. So you got your first deal under, how's it going? Uh, it's going well. We're, we're familiar with the market here because we've been investing here on the residential side for 15 years. Okay. Um, we were uncomfortable with pushing rents, but our property manager has showed us the light. Okay. <laughs> Um, and it's all bills paid. So you can push a little bit harder for a premium. Okay. Um, Why were you uncomfortable pushing the rents? It's harder to do in singles. So in single family, you just don't push rents like that. And so it was just, what if they leave? What if everybody leaves and we have a big old empty apartment complex? Just fear. Yes. Got it. Limiting beliefs. Got it. Got it. Because everybody knows rents go up. Mm -hmm. Everybody, anybody who's ever rented knows that rents go up now. There's a amount that will make you move because moving is a pain in the butt. Anybody mm-hmm. who knows who's moved knows it's a pain in the butt and I'm not going to move for it. I'm probably not going to move for a 50 buck increase, but you know, you start talking hundred, 150, especially if your management isn't great. And mm-hmm. I know your management is great because you talk about, you want your neighbor, you want your buildings to improve the neighborhood and improve the lives of the people who are living there. So I think that's another reason you guys are really worried about pushing the rents because you don't want to put a hardship on the people who are living in those buildings that you guys are in. Well, and it's just me having the knowledge, like as an economist, knowing that, especially right now in this inflationary period, there's a lot of people that don't understand why their dollars aren't going as far. Yeah. And I can sit here all day long and try to explain it, but there's people that just, no matter how many times I explain it or how many ways I explain it, they're just not going to understand it. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want to put people who don't understand why their dollars aren't going as far in a hardship because then they're confused and they're in a hardship. And yeah. that's, I don't want to do that to anybody. Yeah. I think that's and it, our goal is not to make people homeless or not to cause them to have more stress in their life. It seems like both of us and our, our companies are in the position or in the mode of improving the lives of people. Absolutely. Yes, we definitely want to make money. We definitely want to make have our investors make money. And we can do that without causing hardships and displacing people um, the way some do. We, we, I talked to a woman who actually is in a, a town, a city in Canada with rent control. And they really struggle with that because a lot of people will buy a place and put everybody out. So once it's sold, you can raise the rents and now nobody can stay there. But Mm-hmm. We try to, as in the in the mission and social impact world of in, of um, housing, and we're not even talking about affordable housing. The government supplied housing. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about regular old multifamily stuff where we want people to be able to thrive 
there as why, why we make money. Why do you, why does Lauren Capital want to make profits besides to pay their investors? No, we want to um, get to a point where we have, well, <laughs> our ultimate goal is to personally be able to give $100,000 to the Duke 15Q Alliance every year. Okay. Um, because that's the main group that supports and educates and helps families that have the same condition my son has. Okay. Say that, say the condition slower. <laughs> it's dupe 15 Q. Okay. And we'll have that in the show notes. So that is, a, it's not common mm-hmm. and, and angel has educated me on that. So I know a lot of the listeners are physicians who are going, Oh my God, I, for, I did I ever hear about that in my life? I had never heard of it, well, but you probably did because it's the Angelman syndrome, Prater Willie area. Okay. Okay. So it's 11.2 Q to 13.1 Q on the long arm of the 15th chromosome. That's the area, but okay. Prater Willie and Angelman syndrome come from a deletion. One happens with the deletion on the maternal copy. One comes from a deletion on the paternal copy. Okay. Well, do 15 Q is that region. No deletions extra copies got it and it could be within the 15th or on an entirely different chromosome and and is on an entirely different chromosome okay okay so your family goal is a hundred thousand dollars per year invested into finding this finding out more about this condition and this problem and hopefully finding a cure for that is that well i don't know that there's a cure because it's there's people that have it mosaic, which means it's not in every cell. And then there's people that have it in every cell. Okay. And I don't know that there's a way to, to change that. Maybe there is, and I'm just not understanding it, but I don't think there's a way to change that, but to, for people to have more options and have more therapies available, have grants that can help pay for respite hours or help pay for nurses or to help pay for someone that can come into the household and help, help a few hours a day or help with therapies or just some, someone to help, because yeah. I think that as a society, we are so anti-help, like we're afraid to ask for help. It's the weirdest thing. And so I, I want to have a foundation where help is just given. You don't have to ask for it because I know you need it. I know yeah. you're not going to ask me for it. So let me just give it to you. Got it. Got it. Hmm. Thinking about uh, then the, on the medical side of thinking about curing and preventing something altogether. That's a whole another conversation. We can have that offline somewhere because <laughs> I always think everything should be curable. It should be either preventable or curable. Everything. So and it, well, it, like Jason and I are not carriers. Anson was de novo. Wow. Hmm. And you have three other children, right? Mm-hmm. You have Anson, who's a special needs with the dupe Q15, mm-hmm. and then three daughters with three daughters with yeah. who are They're perfectly typical. healthy Fine. and kicking Anson around to make sure he stays as a little boy that he's supposed to be. Right. <laughs> they can be the oldest. Yeah. No, Anson's the second. So Julianne's okay. our oldest. She's okay. 14. And then there's Anson. And then we have Josephine and Jacqueline. Josephine's um, seven and Jacqueline's five. How old is Anson? Anson's 11. He'll be 12 11. in August. Okay. All right. And is it a typical brother, sister? Did you have, did you have a big family yourself as a, I'm the oldest of five and my husband is, um, he has an older sister. Gotcha. And I have three other sisters. Um, okay. Angel, what else are you into? I know you've got, you're a co-founder of the Academy presents and talk about that. What's going on there. Um, so the Academy presents real estate investing rocks is our educational platform. So that's where you would find our podcasts and information about our summits, our workshops. Um, We have a meetup, a virtual meetup every Monday. Um, We may eventually start doing some face-to-face stuff now that um, that's become a possibility again. Yeah. Um, (laughs) But it's really, it's just, um, I was a teacher forever and ever, and I still teach college. I do some dual credit stuff, but I will always have a teacher heart. And even though I'm no longer in the public school system, with the educational platform, it gives me an opportunity to continue to be a teacher and gotcha. to get to share that teacher heart and share information because that's, that's always going to be with me. I don't think that'll ever go away. And in, in, in your podcast, who are you trying to reach? Who are you? Because we talked about this and I thought it was really special that you, there's a special group for you that you're trying to reach and have understand about so, investing. I would really like to help fellow teachers um, because I know that for me personally, 
things were rough. And even though I was teaching without the same need for the paycheck, my fellow teacher friends were there because yes, they love to teach, but that paycheck was necessary too. Yeah. And so what I would like to do is help my teacher friends just get some wiggle room Mm -hmm. so that they weren't, they're not as reliant upon that check because when that check matters a little bit less, you become a different kind of teacher because so what if you don't get along with the admin, let's bind together. Let's come together and say, Hey, admin, we don't agree with your values. We're here for the kids. Who are you here for? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you, you can bind together and really affect actual change instead of continuing to be beat down and mistreated. And you just, you advocate for yourself because if you lose the paycheck, You've got other options now. You can invest in real estate. You can do things. Whereas before you feel like you don't have options. Yeah. So you have to put up with, you put up with so much stuff. And that is, that is exactly where I am with women physicians and women, other professional women and teachers. Is teaching still a majority women? Yeah. Um, And maybe, maybe not so much. It, you get more males in secondary. Yeah. So in middle schools and high schools, but in elementary schools, a male elementary school teacher is very rare. You'll, yeah. you'll find them, but it's very rare. I actually had one in the sixth grade, but anyway, um, everybody else was a woman, but, but to have those options, just like you said, just same, same, it's the same. It seems like across the board with women who, who were mainly trying to reach who we mainly reach because that's just the, the demographic in the professions that we're doing, but to be able to have those options and to, to not, I don't have to be here. I can choose to do something else because I've got money coming somewhere else. It opens up so much. So like you said, you can now bind together. You can even, even if it's just you alone, you know, you can go to that person who's not quite living up to snuff and go, Hey, this isn't as good as it should be. And you know, in your mind, even if you don't say it to them, I don't have to be here. I can do something else. And and when you do say it, they tend to react poorly. Yeah. (laughs) Have you done that before, Angel? (laughs) (laughs) I can imagine this much as a little bit I've talked to you that you are a person who says what's on her mind. To my detriment often. (laughs) I got that. Me too. Me too. Get it. I hundred percent get it. Yeah. But I mean, Um, I had teachers that saw the mistreatment and saw what was going on. They're like, this is so wrong, but they would never speak up for me because mm. they needed that paycheck. Yeah. And I know how I felt and I had options. What's it like to feel that way and not have options. And I don't Mm. want anybody to have to go through that. I a hundred percent agree with you. And uh, Yeah. Oh boy, we could talk about that kind of stuff. We, we, this is the mission. Can you feel it from Angel? This, this is what drives her to get these professional people who give so much to our kids to be able to stay in there and enjoy, have options in how they're doing what they do. It's, it's crucial. I love it, Angel. Thank you so much, so much. You guys give a portion of your profits from your company. This is how you're getting to your $100,000. You give a portion of the profits from your company to the Dupe Q15 Society. What is it called? It's the Dupe 15Q Alliance. 15Q, not Q15. Alliance, got it. It's because there's not enough of us to get a cute name. They just say what it is. (laughs) You'll be able to name it. Once you get your full foundation up and running and you get them, yeah, you got it. You got it. Do you talk to your investors also about um, doing that kind of work, having an impact in a different way besides the way that you guys are working with your investing to help have an impact? So your investors are having an impact that way about doing it on their own in whatever um, they choose. So we've... We did have some investors come to us and say, you know, we know this is your first deal because a lot of people won't invest with, won't invest with first timers. Yep. And we had some people come to us and say, we want to invest with you. Number one, because it's you. But then we had some others that were like, we really like what your future goals are. 
with helping people with rare diseases. Mm -hmm. And so they wanted to be a part of what we were doing because the, because we were doing it for another cause for something outside of ourselves, even though it is ourselves, it's also outside of ourselves. Yes. Yeah. Um, and we were, we really are following the model that we saw Whitney Soul do. He mm-hmm. does um, a portion of his profits goes to families that are trying to adopt. Okay. And so we saw him doing it and we were like, we could do this. <laughs> and so we started, that's where we came up with the idea. And then we actually want to have ours to be um, it for all the funding to come from an endowed fund. Okay. So that it's always there and it's, it's able to fund itself into perpetuity. This is is beautiful. So the point is it is possible to invest in real estate, whatever real estate you want, commercial real estate, multifamily real estate, even single family houses, if you want to, and have a purpose, have an impact in that investment that gives you a return. And you can still, after that, use your money to invest in things that are important to you. And I call charities investments because we all want something to come out of that. And that's the return whether it's a financial return, a public return, whatever that is, it is an investment. So think really hard about what you're investing in and know that you can actually do two things at once, get your financial return and get your social impact return at the same time. And there are a lot of people doing it. We got Lauren Capital, Angel and her husband, Jason. She just mentioned Whitney Sewell. We got to get him on the show. You know, Money with Missions doing it. This, these, there, it is out there. So you can do this. It is not just about making money. Okay. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for listening, Angel. Thank you so much for being here. How can people get in touch with you? How can they stay with you? Um, so we have a website. We have theacademypresents.com. It's a little um, feisty right now. So you may want to get a hold of me through LinkedIn. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm Angel Williams on LinkedIn, or we have a Facebook community, which is um, the Academy Presents um, REI Rocks community. Okay. And that's over on Facebook. And I do answer all of my own DMs. Okay. So we, we have people that help us, but I answer all of my own messages. So, okay. All right. Thank you, Angel. It's been great talking to you. Awesome sauce. Talk to you later. All right. Bye. You listen to Money with Mission podcast because you want to change lives while having your own financial return. You want to make a difference. You are a philanthropy investor. The company Philanthro Investors was founded to financially support companies and individuals of goodwill who are making a positive social impact on planet Earth. The vision of Philanthro Investors is a world in which every family can have the opportunity to live in their own happy home in which every individual can have easy access to organic, natural food, where animals and humans can drink clean water and breathe clean air. A world in which lives are protected from structural damage through innovative construction plans and materials. A world without electrical structures, full of renewable energy. A world without illiteracy, where disease is a distant past. A world where artistic talents are developed, appreciated, and adequately rewarded. You can have true financial freedom with the knowledge, control, and high purpose of philanthropy investing and achieve a true legacy. Learn more at moneywithmission.com. Click opportunities, then click philanthropy investors. You've been listening to Money With Mission. There are projects happening right now where you can have a great financial return while positively affecting the lives of others. To learn more about our opportunities, go to moneywithmission.com.